This is Yahoo Finance Presents. I'm David Hollerith. Former Commodities and Futures Trading Commissioner Chairman, turned blockchain technology lawyer, advocate, and crypto dad, J. Christopher Giancarlo, is among a growing number of ex-regulators who have greatly enhanced the dialogue around how crypto assets should be regulated in U.S. financial markets. A proponent of both allowing crypto innovation to thrive and yet ensuring investor protections and an even playing field, this week Giancarlo laid out eight fundamental principles for how the emerging asset class should be regulated in the U.S. going forward. Here to discuss the proposal in more detail, we're lucky to be joined by Chris himself. David, great to be with you. Great to be with Yahoo Finance. Yeah, Chris, great to have you. So just to dig right into the proposal, I wanted to go first into this point you've made about the CFTC regulating the crypto spot market. Now, the agency's current chair, Rostin Binham, uh, reiterated the same point last week. And, um, you know, I think that uh, the, stre the stretch here is, is wondering uh, why the CFTC should be regulating the spot market. And could you explain this? Because you, you make, it, make it out in your proposal that this is a very important point. Yeah. You know, it, we have a couple of sort of fundamental divides in our federal regulatory system uh, for financial markets. One of those divides is that the SEC, the Securities Exchange Commission, regulates securities, which are capital formation instruments. And the CFTC regulates derivatives, which are risk transfer, risk allocation instruments, the risks of commodity prices going up and down, for example. That's one of the fundamental divides. In the SEC's jurisdiction, they have traditionally had oversight over both uh, derivative markets on securities, but also what we call spot markets. That's the physical delivery market of a security. You want to buy a share of Microsoft, you buy it, it arrives in a day or so, or at least it goes to your uh, holding agency. That is a spot transaction. Now, for historical reasons, the CFTC has overseen only futures markets, that's forward or future delivery of commodities, but not the spot market. And the reason, it may sound strange, but if you think about it, it makes sense. The CFTC oversees gold futures, but not the trading every day of gold. Otherwise, it would have to oversee jewelry shops across the country. It oversees oil futures, but it doesn't oversee gas stations across the country. It oversees wheat futures, but doesn't oversee grain elevators across the country. Those retail markets have traditionally been overseen by state agencies, state laws, and state um, commerce. That's a traditional divide. Now, what's unique here is along comes crypto and it trades both in derivatives and it trades in spot markets. And if it's a security-based crypto, then the SEC has jurisdiction over both the spot and the derivative market. But if it's a commodity-based crypto, which is both the two biggest ones, Bitcoin and Ethereum, almost 60% of the crypto market falls under CFTC jurisdiction. The CFTC only has authority in the derivative markets, the futures markets, but not in the spot markets. And so there's a gap, there's a regulatory gap. 60% of the crypto market when it trades in spot is not overseen by a federal regulator. And that's one of the points in my eight point program that I propose for Congress to address by giving the CFTC authority over spot transactions in commodity cryptos, which is effectively Bitcoin and Ethereum, the two most widely traded crypto instruments here in the United States. And yeah, to get into that more, can you just sort of explain how, how would this create more efficiency in the market? Well, it would bring federal regulation to that marketplace. And we have found that there's a, one of the reasons why American uh, securities, American derivatives, American financial markets are the world's deepest, most liquid, most well used, most patronized is because of effective federal regulation, smart regulation. I'm very proud of the work done by the CFTC, an agency I had the honor to serve as chairman of its smart approach to regulation. In fact, it was the CFTC amongst all the world's financial regulators that first 
green-lighted the creation of a regulated derivative market for Bitcoin and Ethereum, markets that function very well. So bring in the CFTC smart oversight to the spot market, I believe would actually enable that market to accommodate a broader range of participants and therefore make it a deeper and more liquid market. Yeah, and um, I, I'm I'm curious about how this would be enacted. It sounds like it would be it would be Congress. Um, but could you sort of talk more also about how um, this would sort of open the market to more participants? Yeah, so you know many American uh, uh, institutional participants cannot engage in markets that don't have effective regulation, and we see in the uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum spot markets primarily retail investors. There's not a large component of institutional investors alongside them, and traditional institutions, American insurance companies and pension funds, hedge funds and the like. This would allow those participants to engage in those retail markets because those markets would have a, a, a well-established federal regulator overseeing those markets. And looking after things like consumer protection and, and, and adequate funding and, and uh, protections against fraud and manipulation of those markets. Right. And also in your proposal, uh, you mentioned SROs or self-regulating organizations. This is sort of like a private sector um, regulating body. Could you sort of explain what that would mean? Coinbase, um, the cryptocurrency exchange has made a similar proposal, but what would something like that actually look like? Has that ever happened before in U.S. financial markets? Well, in fact, all of our U.S. existing legacy financial markets have self-regulation. In, in the futures markets that I know well from my time at the CFTC, self-regulation goes back to the 1850s, long before federal regulation came about in the 1930s and continues to this day. And our futures markets are the world standard. They are the deepest and most liquid. And I think there's a connection between effective self-regulation alongside effective federal regulation that makes our markets so dominant globally. The same applies in our equities markets. People think about the SEC, but they also need to think about FINRA, the, the, the financial industry self-regulatory organization that oversees a lot of activities in, so in, in the equities markets and in the bond markets. So we have a long history a long successful history in the United States of having self-regulation alongside federal and in some cases alongside state regulation that works very effectively and the proof is in the pudding. No other country, not Europe, not Britain, not in Asia, have securities and futures markets of the size, the magnitude, the depth, the liquidity, the creativity of our American financial markets. And I believe firmly that there's a relationship, there's, there's, a, there's a cause and effect between self-regulation and the success of those markets. And we'd want to have the same impact in crypto as well. Well, Chris, there's been several regulation proposals put out by congressional members in recent months. And I was just curious that, you know, I, I hear that um, it's unfortunately um, sort of consensus that um, maybe a not, not a lot will happen right now. Um, what's your expectation for the next year in terms of what will happen on the regulatory front for cryptocurrency? Well, I'm not a Washington insider, but I did spend five years at a senior regulatory agency in Washington. And I learned enough to know that our two year congressional cycles start with one year of, of congressional action. And then the second year, basically everybody's campaigning for reelection. Well, we're in the second year of a two year cycle right now. Next November is, is election time. And so it's not common for legislation to get passed in the second year of a congressional term. However, I think there's a lot of jockeying going on right now to see what might get passed it, it, following this year. So I'm actually not, uh, I'm not expecting legislation in 2022, but I'm expecting a lot of proposals to be flowed in 2022 that I think may very well result in legislation in 2023. I'm actually quite optimistic that a new Congress both and, 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 and perhaps uh, uh, um, some developments in the Senate, and I don't know who's going to win those races, but I just think you're going to see new momentum in 2023 for crypto legislation. And it, one of my eight points uh, that I've laid out is that Congress needs to take out. It is time now for congressional action on this. This market is approaching a $3 trillion market size. Over 60 million Americans are engaged in exploring crypt cryptocurrency, uh, and it is time for Congress, Congress to step in and put forward a robust and comprehensive crypto uh, uh, bill and legislation. 
Jay, Christopher, Gene, Carlo, thanks again for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. And we'll keep an eye out for those proposals. Thank you, David. Great being with you.